Hi, today I'm going through the question eight of the 2023 paper two, that is the theory paper. And this is part of the data and information management question. Um, and so this is 20 marks, eight marks for a class diagram and 12 marks for the um, trace table. So let's look at this um, question. One of the programs used by Fairly Fit, that is the whole scenario that is used in this paper, is used to store and work with details of various food items which are sold in the cafe. The program makes use of objects to hold relevant information and is made up of many different classes. So there's the stock class, and we've got these five um, instance variables or fields. And you can see that I've started the class diagram on the right, in the answer, they already provide the five um, instance variables or fields are already in the in the class diagram. Okay, it should only be accessible from the stock class. You can see there's already a minus in front of them. You always put the name of the field first, a colon, and then the type. So you can see that's all done for you. Please note that when it's a string, it's a lowercase s string. Okay, even though it's you, this, this class diagram can be used by a programmer that would be programming the class in Java or Delphi or any other language. And only in Java, we use the capital S for string. That's why you put a lowercase s string here because it's for general purpose for any language. Please don't put int if you're declaring this um, class, this instance variable, you put integer, okay? Int is Java specific. Over here, we've got real. That's in Java would be a double. Over here, it's real. Okay, so always the name of the field minus description is the name of the field, colon, string is the type. So um, let's read on. Additionally, the class will need to have the following class fields. When they say class fields, those are static fields. Okay, um, they are fields that belong to the class, they are not instance variables. So there won't be a copy of them each time we make an object of this type. There's only going to be one class fields for all the objects of this type of stock class. So um, it's markup, which is an integer. This value is fixed at 60. So that's a constant. And we're going to need to think about how we show markup in our class diagram. In total stock, which is an integer, represents the total number of all food items in stock. Total cost is a real. This represents the total cost price of all food items in stock. Total sales is a real. This, this, this represents the total value of all food items in stock. Except for the markup field, these fields should only be accessible from the stock class. Okay, so in other words, total stock, total cost, and total sales they're saying these must not be accessible outside the stock class, so we must make them private. But let's start with um, markup. So it can be accessible um, from outside the class. It must be, okay, it says except for the markup field, they should only be accessible. So in other words, markup must be accessible from outside the class. Now, if it's fixed at 60, then it's a constant. So it's markup in capitals. That is how we denote constants in our class diagram. And that's the, um, the convention. And it must be equal to 60 colon integer. Okay. And the next one is total stock. Oh, sorry. And also please remember to underline it. Okay. I'm going to here and because I'm working in Word, I can underline it that way. Remember, if you're writing this out, you must underline. And then we're going to go to total stock, and that would be minus total stock. Oops. If you're working in in Word, just go Control Z to put the minus back against the margin. Total stock, and this will be colon integer. Now, how do we denote that this is a class field? In Java, this would be a static field. I'm going to 
underline it, okay? Underline that whole line like that. That means it's a class field. Then minus total stock um, cost, colon, real, and again, I underline it. And then the last one, minus total sales, colon, real, and again, underline it. All of these are class fields, so they are underlined. That means they are static variables. And if you were to call them, if you wanted to get hold, put a value into these variables, well, no, not put a value, but in get a value out, well, whatever you're doing, you would have to say stock dot total stock. You couldn't have a, an instance of the stock class to call those or to use those fields, all right? But it says here they should only be accessible from the stock class, so that's why I've made them minus, all right? And again, then it says complete. Okay, here are all the methods they want. The para parameterized constructor method, accepting the following parameters. And they've listed all the parameters there. I'm going to do them as I read about them. So a parameterized constructor will be plus, remember to put constructor. You put the word constructor there and then your brackets. Then you put all the variables, the parameters. So here are the parameters. D, which is a string, so it's going to be D colon string, comma, then SQ and integer, SQ colon integer, comma, D capital P colon real, comma, and HF colon boolean, and close brackets. Okay, that's your constructor. Then the accessor methods for the healthy food and stock quantity fields is going to be plus accessors. You are accessing the data. You are getting the data out. So you must say get healthy food. All right. And it's bracket bracket. You do not have a parameter for an accessor. What type of data is this going to return? It's colon. If it's the healthy food, Obviously, variable, we look back and we see that healthy food is a Boolean, so it's going to return a Boolean. Then plus, um, we need an accessor for stock quantity. Let's look here. Stock quantity is an integer, so it's going to be an accessor. We are getting the data out, so it gets stock quantity. Bracket, bracket colon, and it's an integer. And then next, we want mutator method for the description field, which will accept a parameter, DIN, which is a string. Now, a mutator, you know, from those mutant ninja turtles or whatever, those programs that kids watch, you might have even watched them <laughs> when you were a kid. Um, a mutate, to mutate means to change something. So it's a set method. So we've got set description with a capital D. And if we're going to set the field to another value, we need a parameter in the brackets so that we know what value to set it to. So that's where we put in the brackets, we put that D capital I N colon string and close brackets. That is a void method. It does not return data. It just changes the value of the variable and it's done its job. So it doesn't need to return anything. So we don't have to say colon anything afterwards. Although I looked at the um, memo and they put colon void, but I haven't seen that done before. That's not actually in the IEB document for class diagrams. So I'm not sure why they did that. Right, next. A accessor method for the total stock field. So it's going to be plus get total stock. And if it's an accessor method, it's bracket bracket. What type of data is total stock? Total stock is an integer. So it's going to be colon integer. And last of all, a two string method to combine the various fields of a stock object into a string. 
that's going to be plus two string bracket bracket remember to a two string method it's usually just bracket bracket and what data does a two string method return it converts all the data from the from the stock instance very um instance all right whatever object you've got into one big long string and it returns a string and that's it we've completed our class diagram and um yeah that's it it's for eight marks all right then the next part of the um exam is a trace table so let me move that away right so let's read it. An array of stock objects called SR exists, which shows the stock of all food items at any one time. And you can see these are corresponding corresponding data for the class diagram. But yeah, just because you're familiar with all the, the types already, if you've done the class diagram nicely. So here's an example of the data. We've got the description, lateral salad, stock quantity eight, cost price 550, selling price 880. Healthy food, yes. Remember, the healthy food was a billion, so it's either going to be yes or no. And they, they've given us four items there, all right? Fairly food has a policy that at all times, their stock of healthy food items must be greater than or equal to 80% of their total stock of food items. For example, if they have 50 items of stock, then at least 40 of these must be healthy food items. Consider the following algorithm, which has been designed to alert the cafe manager the stock of healthy food items drops below 80% of all items in stock. So this algorithm will be tested against the sample data in SR. So here's the method. Remember, this is an algorithm, not Java or Delphi. Okay, so we've got method, test healthy food, bracket, bracket, colon, string, begin. In line one, we are already doing something. And can you see this is, I've put a, done an Excel spreadsheet here, which is just like the, um, the trace table that is on the paper. So we're going to fill this one in. But um, first, there's a question, question A, what method will be called to access the value of the variable total stock? And for that, you can look back at your class diagram. Let's just quickly open it again. And to get, what did they say? To access the value of the value, total stock. It will be get total stock, bracket, bracket. That's your answer there. And then you've got to complete the trace table. It says you must include the line numbers as reference to the line of code in the algorithm. There are more lines in the grid that are necessary for a correct answer. Okay, so we're going to display our algorithm here. Maybe I should just zoom in a little bit so you can see it better, All right? And then I'm going to display my Excel spreadsheet here where I'm going to pull in the line numbers and the data values as we go through the algorithm. So we're on line one. Total stock gets the value 30. So we're gonna fill in the line number here, line number one. Total stock is our column we need to fill in because the variable we're working with is total stock and it gets the value 30. And that's all we need to do for line one. Line two, the size variable gets the value four. So we first fill in again the line number, and line number two. We move across the table till we get to the size column because the size variable is the one we're working with in line two. So in line, in, in the column size, we put the value four because size gets the value four in line two. In line three, count gets the value zero. So fill in the line number, but three, and shift across your table till you get to the count column. And then count gets the value zero, okay? Line four, alert level gets the value 0, 0.00. So we've got to fill in our line number first, four, and we move across our table till we get to the alert level. Be careful. They first put the column alert, then they put the alert level. So alert level gets the value 
0 0.00 and Excel is going to change that to straight zero. That's the same. So um, that's fine. And then in line five, let's fill in our five. Okay, please ignore these numbers here on the left. That's Excel, right? So in line five, the variable alert gets the value level okay. So we move across the table till we get to the alert column and then we put level okay there. In line six, we start a for loop. FOR, K gets the value zero, two, size minus one, ink, that ink means increment by one. It's like the I++ in your Java for loop. Okay, increment by one. That means every time you go around the loop, you're going to increment K by one. So in line six, we start with K equals zero. So let's fill in the line number six and move across the table till we get to the K column, All right? And so K gets the value zero, all right? And they have not put a question to say whether the for loop must continue. So I will just keep going. It's here begin. That means the for loop begins. We jump to line seven. Let's fill in our seven here. And what happens in line seven? If S array square brackets K, remember we've just filled in that K is zero. So you could substitute zero in here for, for now. S array K zero, square bracket zero, dot get healthy food. If that is true, then we're gonna do something. First, we've got to figure out whether this is true or false. So let's go back to S array zero. Sorry, but sorry, I moved my mouse to the wrong place. S array zero dot get healthy food. Get healthy food is this one. Is it a yes or a no? Is it a true or a false? It's a yes, which is the same as a true. So is true equal to true? Yes, true is equal to true. So it is true. So I'm going to put a true there. All right. That's line seven. That's all that happens in line seven. Sorry, Excel converts that to capitals. Suppose I could go control Z. Oops, no, then it just removes it full on. I'll just leave it as capitals. Okay, begin. So it is true. So we will go into the if. This begin means do the if statement. Act as if the if with the if, if the if gives you a true. If it's true, do this. Do count equal count plus one. So we are going to do line eight. We move to the count column because that's the one that's changing. So count equals count plus one is going to be zero plus one will give me one. That's all that happens in line eight. Then we end the if, we end the for. When we end the for, it means that we are jumping back to line six, where the for loop begins, as long as zero has not grown bigger than four. All right, or bigger than three, because we're starting zero, one, two, three. We've got four elements in our array, right? So as long as K is still less than or equal to three, we will keep looping around the for loop. All right, so I'll leave that arrow there for now, because we are still busy looping around the for loop. So we've gone back to line six. What happens in line six? We will increment our K. So K goes from 0 to 1. You, see, you can always look up the column that you're busy working on, whatever variable it is. What was the latest value for that variable? Our latest value was 0. If we are incrementing it, it will become 1. Okay, so line 7, if S array dot get healthy food equals true, right? It's line 7. Let's put our 7 there. Let's have a look. We are busy with cell K of S arrow. Cell K is K equals one. So cell one is S arrow square brackets one. Is the healthy food true? 
it's a yes. Okay, so it's still true. We better fill in a true here. Remember that is all we need to fill in. We're asking this question. Is S array, square brackets, K dot get healthy food, bracket, bracket, equal to true. And it is true. So, sorry, my arrow is pointing in the wrong place. There we go. Sort of there's where we want it. We are inside the if. The if is true, so we've got to do this begin part, which takes us to line eight, and we're going to increment count again. So line eight, count will go from one to two. We can look up the column and see that the latest value for count was one. If it goes count plus one, it becomes two. And again, we get to the end of the if, get to the end of the four, so we must go back to the top of the for loop. So back to line six. What changes? K gets incremented by one again because we're in a for loop. So we go to our K column. Look up the column. What was the latest value for K? It was one. We've got incremented, so it becomes two. We now go to our line seven and test this again. If it's Array square brackets k dot get healthy food brackets bracket equals to true. Well, we're in s array square brackets two. There it is. Square brackets two. The healthy food is still true. It's still a yes. So it's still true. We're going to fill in a true again. And then we go to line eight. If it's true, it is true. So we increment count again. So count becomes. Three, just if you look up the column, you can see the latest value was root two, we make it a three. And we can now we end our if, end our four, go back to line six. And um, again, we increment K, where's the K column? There's the K column. Latest value was two. We've got increment K, make it a three. And, um, right, we test, is that still less than size? Well, yes, it is. Um, size will be four because there are four cells, so it's still less than size. So we can still carry on and we'll say, if S array square brackets three dot get healthy food is true. And we look there, but this time the healthy food is a no. So in line seven, this time, for the question mark, we must fill in a false, okay? And because it's a false, we're going to jump right over these lines. We will not do them because the if statement is false. So we're going to jump straight to the end of the for loop. And that takes us back to line six. Remember, we do carry on with line six. We now increment k to 4, but now we will see that k is greater than size minus 1, so we will jump to line 9, right? That's what happens when a for loop ends. You still increment the, 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 the loop variable, but when you've finished incrementing it, you and realize that it's too big for the for loop, you jump to the line that get, goes after the end four. That's why we've got to jump down to line nine. All right. So let's go line nine. Right. So alert level gets the value. Sorry, I'm going to just remove those, those arrows of mine because they're a bit distracting. Okay. Alert level gets the value count. In line nine, we want alert level. So we need to fill in our value over here. That is where we're going to fill in the result. But we need to test count. Oops, sorry. <laughs> My pencil's not working so well. Count divided by total stock. All right, where is count? Our latest value. For count, we're going to look here. Oops, sorry, I actually filled in that four in the wrong place. 
think I'll fix that. Um, that four, I filled in under counts. It was supposed to be under K. Maybe some of you noticed that, right. We are now wanting to fill in a value here for a load level and we want count. Our latest value for count, let me still scribble here, is this four divide by total stock. And if I, but this is where I need to fill in my value. I go to the total stock column and look up what is the latest value for total stock. Well, we only filled it in in line four, in line one, it has not changed. So it's still 30. So we've got four divided by 30 and it's real division. Oh my word. And my um, mental maths is not that great. So let's use a calculator. Um, 4 divided by 30, and it says it's real division, so it's 0 0.133, okay? Let's just remove our annotation tool, and we're going to fill in over here 0 0.133, okay? That is the value I get, 4 divided by 30, okay? So it says... If alert level is less than 0 0.8, we're in line 10, we've got to work out. See, there's the question, alert level less than 0 0.8. Is it a true or a false? It is less than 0 0.8, so it's a true. Okay. So then we go into this begin. We are going to go to line 11. And we've got to change alert to level low. In line 11, we go across to the alert column and we're going to fill in level low. And if, um, there, there's the end if, and then we go to line 12 and we return alert. So I'm going to put line 12 here. What do we return? We return the value that is in the alert variable and so we are going to return level low. Okay. And so that's that's the complete um, trace table. That's where the trace table ends because we've reached the end of the method. And so that that is that's all we have to do there. Um, let me just zoom out again. And now there's a are there any more questions here? I'm not sure. Okay. There are more questions. Let's carry on. So line eight of the algorithm is currently incorrect. What happened in line eight? Line eight said that count equals count plus one. So in other words, we're counting how many healthy foods we've got, right? Because if the healthy food said true, we would increment the counter. Um... Back to the question, correct the line of code so that the correct result will be achieved. How can we correct that line of code? Well, this told us that the stock of healthy food items must be greater than or equal to 80% of this total stock of food items. For example, if they have 50 items in stock, at least 40 must be healthy food items. So we were not adding the stock quantity, right? We just added one in count. We should have been adding the stock quantity to the, to the counter. The counter should not just be incrementing by one when this is true, when the question mark is array k dot get healthy food is true. We must add the stock quantity to it. So it should be count equals count plus, get stock quantity because in um, for S array square bracket zero, you will add eight because it is a healthy food. When you get to the power oats, you will add 15. When you get to the protein wrap, you will add four. All right, in the Prego steak, you don't add it because it's not a healthy food. So what would you type in there? I would put here, um, can I, I think I can add text here. 
Okay, I would say count equals, or actually they've used arrows, so we will use arrows, git count plus git doc quantity, bracket, bracket. That's what you need to do, all right. And then there is a truth table here, all right. Very nice truth table that's actually been set out for you. Forgot about this one, okay. Um, let's fill it in quickly. I'm gonna fill it in over here. Let's just read the question, okay. Yeah, the, the question, um, yeah, it is important, I suppose, but this is the important part, this sort of logic um, expression. That is what you need to evaluate. Okay, let's quickly read it. Belly Fit would like to incentivize customers who use the gym and eat healthy meals in the cafe to lose weight. They wish to apply the following conditions. A customer, um, a customer has eaten 10 healthy meals, it will give you an M, M for meals. A customer has used the gym five times, it will give you a G, G will be true. If a customer is within five kilos of their target weight, it will give you a W, then, and so you'll get a W. The Fairly Fit will re reward any customer who has eaten 10 healthy meals and used the gym five times, or any customer who has not eaten 10 healthy meals, but has used the gym five times and is within five kilos of their target weight. This condition can be written as the following Boolean expression. So it's F the function of brackets, M comma G comma W, close brackets equals M and G, the dot is an and, the plus is an or, brackets, not M and G and W exactly as has been expressed here. They've even written out the Boolean expression for you, which is really nice and very helpful. Okay. So um, I'm just gonna draw on this table. So first of all, we want in this first column, we want not M. Do you see that little dash, M dash? It means the opposite of column M. So what, it, what I suggest you do is Keep your finger on column one. And as you trace your way down, you just, if there's a zero there, you put a one. If there's a zero, you put a one. So it's gonna go one, 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 one. If there's a one, you write down a zero. So M dash is just the opposite of M, okay? So that's how you fill this M dash column, all right? Um, and then, We'll go to the M and G column. This time you're gonna use, you're gonna point on two columns, okay? You're gonna point to the G column and the W column, sorry, not W, I'm showing the wrong column, the M column, this one, the M column and the G column. And as you trace your way down, fingers, you're gonna keep, deciding whether M and G is true or false. Now remember, a zero and a zero is a zero, a zero and a zero is zero, a zero and a one is a zero, and that's a zero, a one and a zero is a zero, a one and a zero is one is a zero, and a one and a one is a one. Okay, it's almost like multiplying. Zero times zero is zero, zero times one is zero, okay. Maybe that's why they put it as a dot, all right, to help you remember how it works. Now, we want M and G and W. My word, I think somebody got this wrong here, yeah, or M dash and G. I would have added an extra column for G and W and then worked that out, but that's fine. Right, so now you've got to look at well, let's rather erase all of these pointers and think of which columns we want to we want to work with. You're going to use M dash, that one, and G, that one, and W, that one. Okay. So um, it's going to be zero and zero and one, which will give us zero. 
zero and one and one will give you zero. As long as there's a zero, when you're ending, you will get zero, all right? If there's a zero in these three columns, you will get a zero. Only if all three are a one, then you get a one, okay? So I keep checking, are they all one? And only if they're all one will I get a one here, all right? Let's just erase my little marks here. And we can carry on. So now can you see that we are ready to work out this final expression, which is actually M and G, I've got it here, and it, dash M and G and W, which I've got over here, All right? So I can, oops, sorry. I can just keep my eyes on these two columns. These are the two columns I need to focus on, but this time I am oaring them. I've got a plus between them, between those two columns, okay? It's a plus, which stands for all. So or is like plus, but I don't like to say that because if you had one and one, that is not two. You never get a two in a truth table, okay? You only get zeros and ones. So please don't put two because then I know you don't know what you're talking about, all right? So zero or zero is zero. Zero or zero is zero. Zero, zero, zero. Zero or one is one. Zero, 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 or oh, one or zero is one, one or zero is one. So in terms of true and false, they want me to say, express the result as true or false. We don't just want to see zeros and ones on your truth table. We want to see that if it's a zero, you put a false. Okay, you could just put an F. And if it's a one, you put a true. You can write out the whole word if you want, but for me, a simple F or T is perfect. Okay, and that's all you need to do then. And that's the end of the paper. And I hope that this lesson helped you, and I will see you next time.